In the last lesson, we looked at a common issue in React applications, passing the same data through multiple layers of components, even though only one component actually needs it. This is the prop drilling problem. Now let's see how React solves this with something called context. Context is a React feature that lets you share data across your component tree without having to manually pass props through every intermediate component. A simple way to think about context is that it lets you broadcast a value at a high level and any component nested inside can subscribe to it directly. To understand this feature clearly, we will first recreate the prop drilling scenario, then replace all the unnecessary props with context. And to give us a head start, I've created a new project called Context Demo with the components already created. The code is available in the GitHub repo, but let me walk you through the setup. We'll start with the app component. Within the app component, we've defined a user object with name Bruce Wayne, role admin, and theme dark. The app component doesn't need this data for itself, but the header component is a child of app, so we pass it down. The header is defined in header.jsx. It renders the header element, an h2 title, and then the navigation bar component. Again, header doesn't use the data itself. It simply forwards it to navigation bar. The navigation bar component is defined in navigation bar.jsx. We have the nav element, an h3 navigation, and then the user menu component. Same story here another component forwarding props it doesn't need. It passes user to user menu, which is defined in user menu.jsx. The user menu component is also a middleman. It has a div, an h4, and then the avatar component. It passes the user data it receives to avatar, which is defined in avatar.jsx. And finally, the avatar component which is the only one that actually needs the data. It displays the welcome message using the username. We have recreated the header section of this component tree. When you run the application, you should see welcome Bruce Wayne from the avatar component, but also headings from all the other components. We have the dashboard text from the app component, header from the header component, navigation from the navigation bar component, and user menu from user menu component. But what's important here is noticing how many layers the user object traveled through. Header, navigation bar, and user menu have no use for this data, yet they're forced to accept it and pass it along. This is the prop drilling problem we talked about, and this is exactly the type of problem context is designed to fix. Step one, create a new file called user context dot jsx within the source folder. At the top, import create context from react and invoke it. Create context gives us a special object that react uses to share data without manual prop forwarding. Let's call it user context and export it. So export const user context is equal to create context. Step two, Wrap the parts of the application that need access to the data. In this case, everything under the app component. So in app.jsx, import user context from dot slash user context and wrap the entire component tree with it. User context, opening and closing tags. This right here is often referred to as the context provider. Next, specify a prop called value on user context and pass in the user object. The value prop is what we are providing or broadcasting. Any component nested inside this user context can now access the user data directly, which means we can remove the user prop from header. We can also remove the prop from navigation bar and we can remove it from user menu as well. In user menu, remove user and the prop to avatar. Now let's update avatar to use context instead of props. To consume the context value, we need to use another React hook called useContext. 
import it from React. Import within curly braces, use context from React. Along with use context, we also need to import the user context we created earlier. So import user context from dot slash user context. In the component, we call use context and we pass it our user context. This returns the value that is broadcast at the top of the tree, which is the user object in our case. So const user is equal to use context. We can now bind this to our JSX instead of the user prop. Save all the files, refresh the browser, and you can see everything still works as expected. Welcome, Bruce Wayne. But look at how clean the code is. We don't need to pass user through every level. The only components that know about user are app, which provides it, and avatar, which consumes it. Header, navigation bar, and user menu are blissfully unaware of the user data passing through them. Now let me show you something important. What happens if we remove the provider at the top of the tree? So if I comment out user context and refresh the browser, you can see the app doesn't work because avatar tries to read user.name but receives undefined. There's no provider giving it a value. To fix this, we can provide a fallback value by passing a default to create context. Pass in a user object with default values. Name is going to be guest, role is going to be visitor, and theme is going to be light. Now, if there is no provider in the tree, avatar shows welcome guest instead of crashing. This can be helpful for testing components in isolation, but in real apps, you typically want to wrap the tree with the context provider because the default value is static and can't be updated. So let's restore the provider in app.jsx and go back to the expected behavior. And we're back to welcome Bruce Wayne. So let me quickly summarize what we have done. We created a user context object that we can use to broadcast data to the entire component tree. We wrapped the app component with user context provider and passed the user object as a value. We then used the use context hook in avatar to consume the user data directly from the context. Now everything works as expected, but notice we're using a static user object here. In the next lesson, we'll make this even more powerful by combining context with state so the data becomes dynamic and updatable throughout the application. We'll create a context that provides not just data, but also functions to modify that data.